Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. A lot of questions I always get is, what kind of fence do you have? Well, we're going to show you what type of fence that we use to keep our bison in. doing is we are giving the bison more grazing ground which is awesome out here it's it's green it's doing good they're doing their thing grazing okay the big grazer of north america what we're going to do is build a a new fence and put them over here on this lot We've got a lot of natural grass um, some native grasses growing out here so we're going to build some fence and we're going to talk about what type of fencing that we use not all the places that raise bison in North America use the same fence as us. There's a wide variety. And so I want to talk to you about that. So a technique that we always do, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, we marked it every 10 feet with some marking paint and we went back through and that's where we set our T post at. It's every 10 feet, some people do 12 feet, some people do um, eight. So with these T posts, I got six and a half foot tall T posts, driving them in the ground and then we, uh, we're gonna do six lines of, or six strings of barbed wire on this, this stretch all the way down. Got some height for the bison. So I got Wes out here with me from Arms Family Homestead, my nephew. He's helping me out building some fence, see? He's in way better shape than me. We're switching off on T-Post. I'm letting him get some a workout in because, see, no school, no athletics. Wes is a real athletic kid. He plays um, basketball and baseball. The kid's busy year round and um, this is a good way to keep him in shape. Drive some T-posts, it's good for you. Farm work, it's good labor work. It's a good workout. So driving these T-posts by hand, it's awesome. Don't you love it? Close. Weston put the T-post on backwards, but he was out here helping. That's all that matters, right, Wes? Yes, sir. You know, there's a lot of kids at, uh, at home sitting on their butts. Wes is out here working with his uncle, trying to learn something. Got the line stretched here. He's laying out T-post. Um, I'm gonna brush hog this stretch right here. 
because this is half of um, this lot or this section, whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm going to go down this line right here and go ahead and brush hog. Because when we stretch this fence, you got to be careful from all the, uh, the weeds and stuff. It's just a lot easier if you've got uh, all that crap out of the way, that tall grass and weeds and shrubs out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and brush hog this and clear it out for our next stretch and get it ready. have some a little bit more green grass this has had nothing on it uh, this is the hay lot that we cut over the summer I've got a video of that uh, we cut this pasture the very first time uh, this summer and got some hay off of it which we fed to the bison but now this is gonna be the first time we're gonna actually have some grazing on it and um, I'm really excited to get some more ground and we've got babies coming so the herd is getting bigger and I love it all right got our gate hung got a pre 12 foot gate we got it hung wes and i got it hung he helped me out um, hanging this bad boy and I, something i want you to look at here okay got a lot of comments from you uh guys about when the um my bull dunbar was flipping gates off the hinge got the top hinge down we got it right this time i hope but you know what's interesting the only time he ever knocked the gates off the hinge was when they were open. That's the only time he's never knocked a gate off the hinge when it's been closed. It's funny. You know what? I love evenings like this. You got a full moon coming up on one side, okay? And then these Oklahoma sunsets. I mean, you can't beat that. You can't beat that right there. Oklahoma sunsets. on the fence we're getting really close we've got um, one a strand stretched uh, we're gonna get the rest of them on today remember we're putting on uh, six strands of this barbed wire um, it's a Sheffield 12 and a half gauge and um, that's what we use around here quite a bit um, two point and uh, so we're gonna stretch uh, the other five lines so we'll have our six uh, six strands for height on our six and a half foot T post. Um, it's a beautiful day. So, time to get to work, get away from the cabins a little bit, get on the farm, hang out with the bison some. Come on. Huh? Right. Okay.
Better? <laughs> Is that better? Getting our uh, other half of the fence stretch. Went ahead and tied up our first run, the first half of this to an H post. Um, and now we're gonna run our next line right here and start our other half of the stretch. And uh, this will wrap it up. I got an old nephew with me. Get some work in. All right, so what Wes is doing is every five, we're putting our ties on. We're putting our uh, strands, we're tying them to the T-post. When I say ties, all I'm talking about is just these little clips. Clips right here. Um, and we put them around the T-post. So every five is how we do it. So he's going along and he's putting in every time that we pull some barbed wire we put it on our first t-post we attach this and then we go about every five and we mark them um, and we want to do that all the way down on this whole stretch here so he's going down on every five and putting these on and then what we'll do is once everything is stretched which is we're on our last uh, strand of barbed wire once we get it stretched we'll go by and do every fifth we'll check it We'll make sure that we lack our depth on all these. And then we'll come back and we'll put them on every single T-post. Like you can see here, these are all, none of these are attached, but they will be soon. So he's going through there and doing that. So where we're at now, we've pulled our last strand. It's exciting. We're getting so close and um, I'm excited to get these bison out here in this fresh grass. Um, we cut it this summer, like I said, uh, for hay, but look at all this green grass. It is probably a foot tall, maybe higher in some places. And there's a lot of natural grasses here. So I'm super excited. So now what I'm going to go back and do is West went and tied all of the uh, strands of barbed wire every five T-posts. 
it's time to add all the rest of the clips, ties, whatever you call them. I call them ties. It's time to add all those ties to, to all of our barbed wire. And that's it. That'll be it. That's it, guys. And the next thing is we're going to let the bison in here. And you want to talk about exciting? There's nothing more exciting to a bison other than hearing those cubes rattle in a bucket. Um, but running out to fresh green pastures. They love that. And you guys know that I've got four females that are pregnant. And hopefully everything works out. We'll have four calves. I'm going to predict June and July again. So just in time, get them this green grass while it's here as summer starts. And uh, hopefully June and July will be expanding really fast. And uh, they need more ground, of course. Bison too. And they love this green grass. So we've about got this done, guys. We're getting really close. Okay, fence is done, really excited. We're gonna let the bison in here. I'm gonna set the drone up and we're gonna go in. We're gonna round them up. They're up at the corral, getting some water. I'm gonna shake that feed bucket, see if I can get their attention. We're gonna let them out in the new pen and see how they do. There's nothing more exciting than seeing bison on a fresh ground. All right, let's get ready.
that was exciting. That was thrilling. Um, that's moments like that. All that hard work finally pays off. And um, as you can see right there, so much excitement from this animal. And that's one of the reasons why we love this animal so much. Such a cool and interesting animal and gets pumped, so pumped for green grass. And right there is a perfect example of the benefits of this is you get to see that and you get to be a part of that. And there's nothing like it. Um, there's no animal like this. And uh, that's why we love the American bison. So all that hard work ends in this. I wanna thank you guys for following us along. Thank you uh, for subscribing. And uh, you're just on this journey, uh, you know, raising the small bison herd in Southern Oklahoma. Thank you guys.